This week we have explored the rebellion of Israel with Gordon Carl and its consequences at Mount Sinai, also known as Mount Horeb. Chapter 33 is all about the presence of God, whether God goes with us, where and how Moses met with God, and the glory of God's presence. So first, going without God, verses 1 to 6. Despite their rebellion, God commands Israel to go and take possession of the promised land, a place of milk and honey. God promises to send an angel before them to drive out those who live there. However, God will no longer go with them personally, as their unwillingness to obey may result in destruction. The people recognise God's holiness and their sinfulness, and they mourn at the distressing news that they will no longer enjoy God's presence with them. They also begin to demonstrate their repentance by removing all their remaining ornaments, their brooches, their rings, bracelets and so on. These had led them into trouble as the gold from the earrings had been melted down to make the golden calf. We're familiar with having to change travel plans, but I wonder if we're distressed at the thought of going without God. Do we mourn over the way our sin separates us from God? Have we removed the things that distract us from worshipping God alone in the way pleasing to him. Secondly, the tent of meeting in verses 7 to 11. Despite the withdrawal of God's presence from the camp, Moses was still able to meet with God. This was done in a tent outside the camp, rather than the later tabernacle which was inside the camp. Both the tent outside and the inner part of the tabernacle are described as a tent of meeting. And the regular practice was that Joshua stayed in the tent, but others would go there to ask God some. When Moses went to the tent, the pillar of cloud came down and stayed at the entrance. Moses was able to speak with God, and this is described as a conversation with a friend, face to face. This extraordinary privilege of direct communication with God was recognised by the Israelites, who stood at the entrance of their tents and they worshipped when the cloud came down. I wonder what our experiences in meeting with God are. Perhaps we're conscious of special times when we felt close to God and aware of his presence. Perhaps we know too the sense of loss we feel when we sin and we grieve the Holy Spirit. We're assured in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit dwells or literally makes a tent inside every Christian. So chosen by God and in Christ by the Spirit, we all enjoy the privilege of intimate fellowship with God. However we may feel. God's communication with us now is primarily through the Bible but we need to give time to read, memorise and meditate upon the word, to pray and to contemplate in response. In homes too, we need to make time to meet with God together, as well as gathering on a Sunday when we are assured that Jesus will be with us if we meet in his name. And thirdly, the glory of the Lord in verses 12 to 23. Here we have a record of a conversation between Moses and God. On the basis of God's command in Exodus 3.10 and his favour in Genesis 6.8, Moses asks, who will go with me? in verse 12. And he also asks to be taught God's ways in verse 13. This seeks to improve on God's promise of an angel to go before them. God promises his presence or face will go with Moses 
The you is singular in verse 14, and he also promises rest. Moses then presses for God to be with all the people he is leading, to distinguish them from others in verses 15 to 16. And God agrees because he is pleased with Moses and knows him by name in verse 17. Finally, Moses asks to be shown God's glory in verse 18. He's seeking to see God's face directly without a tent curtain between them, or having to hide his face through fear, or just catching a glimpse of the sapphire pavement between, beneath his feet. But God is so holy that even a great prophet like Moses cannot see him and live. So God instead reveals his goodness and his name in verse 19. This understanding of the sovereign character of God in choosing on whom to show mercy and compassion or grace and deep-seated emotions augments the earlier revelation of his name as the self-existent one, I am who I am, in chapter 3 and verse 14. Moses is protected by God's hands in a cleft in the rock until he's passed by and Moses then is then allowed to see God's back rather than his face. While we may know something of God's existence and his glory in creation, as we're reminded in Psalm 19, the wonder of his redemption in Jesus is too wonderful for even the wisest human mind to imagine. The gospel of salvation in Christ is revealed through scripture and it needs to be proclaimed, as in Romans chapter 10. Spiritual life and certain knowledge of God's will also require the word of God until that day when we will stand before God and see him face to face, as we're promised in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 12. So we should have this same longing for God's presence with us, driving us to holiness so we're not separated from him, and drawing us to the Bible to learn his ways. Augustus Toplady was caught in a thunderstorm and sought refuge in a cleft in the rock. He was inspired to write the hymn, Rock of Ages, which expresses this wonder of salvation by a sovereign God.